We're continuing to build up the apparatus for analyzing short-term short fluctuations in the economy and, and the government's reaction to it. And the apparatus that we're going to be using is aggregate demand and aggregate supply curve, which relate the overall price level to the supply and demand for the economy as a whole. In a previous video, we looked at the aggregate demand curve and the long-run aggregate supply curve. Now, a feature of the long-run aggregate supply curve is that, that uh, the amount of output that the economy will produce or can produce over the long haul really doesn't depend on the price level. It depends on the uh, the labor force, the, the capital stock infrastructure and so forth, and the technology. <clears throat> but there can be changes in what is supplied in the economy in the short run if there are aggregate price changes, i.e. Uh, in inflation or deflation. And we use the short run aggregate supply curve to do that analysis. Now, here we have the depiction of this where we've got the overall price level on this axis and the real GDP on the horizontal axis. Now, I want to remind you that this may look like a supply curve of like wheat or autos or, or whatever. This is not the price of a particular good. It's the prices for all goods. This is the GDP for the economy as a whole. So <coughs> even if it looks like a regular supply curve from micro, there's really very different things going on here. There's some micro stuff behind it, but the relationships here are quite different. So we have to go through a little bit more of a, of a discussion in order to understand why this short run aggregate supply curve slopes upward. Three major um, stories about why this might occur. And different macroeconomists subscribe to uh, one or more of these, so they're, they're distinct, but they're related. The first one has to do with the uh, often observed reality that wages are slow to adjust. People have contracts, labor contracts. People have an annual uh, employment review, so they only get a, uh, an increase or change in their salary once a year. There are lots of reasons why it may be difficult for prices to change overnight or, or wages to change overnight. They can sometimes be uh, much slower to change in the prices of final goods, for example. So let's imagine that you have these wages for a significant part of the economy that uh, can't adjust quickly. They're sticky. And we'll start out with this initial level of, of uh, prices in the economy and a level of output. And then we have an increase in the overall price level but keeping some of the wages constant in some sectors. So what does this do to the, to the companies that are employing those workers where they, that they don't have to change their wage and the prices of the goods that they sell go up? Well, it's a pretty nice deal for the, for the firm. They get higher prices, but they don't have to pay more for the workers. They will produce <coughs> more output profitably if their prices go up and their costs stay the same. <coughs> so the bottom line with this, prices go up, output will increase because wages don't adjust quickly. Okay, so that's one reason. <coughs> Another reason could be because some of the prices of the goods themselves don't change very quickly. Okay, so let's say that it's, you know, it's complicated to change your um, 
prices uh, and let the public know. Um, it may be that you've got published price lists. You may have, you know, certain um, um, restrictions on your ability to quickly change the uh, the prices that you charge to your customers. And but some of the prices in the economy tend to go up. Now, if you can't change your prices and the overall prices in the economy rise, your goods become more attractive. Inflation's going up, your prices are remaining the same. You produce more. Also, if you think about it from the other direction, let's say prices have fallen for some reason. And you're a restaurant. You've got your menu. You've got a, you know, your price list there. You know it's you know the the prices for all your entrees, all your appetizers, everything. And prices have fallen. Well, what you'd like to do is to change your prices quickly. You know, get the men, get you know, do the menu quickly. Well, it may take a while. It may, it's costly. So you leave your your menu the way it is, and as the prices go down there's less demand for your goods because you haven't been able to lower your prices. Output falls. Bottom line with both sticky wages and sticky prices, the price mechanism is not really functioning well to get supply and demand equal to each other and you've got some actions at the, at the macroeconomic level as a consequence. So, these are two reasons why that short-run aggregate supply curve slopes up. Let's imagine a third. Misperceptions. What do I mean by that? Let's say that inflation's gone up, all the prices have gone up everywhere. But as an individual, I don't, as a firm, I don't really know that yet. I won't know. The, about the overall uh, inflation rate until the government uh, publishes data. I'm seeing higher prices for my goods and I think, oh, that's because people want to buy my stuff. I'll make more. Even though the price level doesn't really send you a signal to do that, you don't know yet. You misperceive what those actual price changes are. So you produce more. So you can have another reason why the short-run aggregate supply curve can shift up. Okay. So here's a discussion about the short-run effects of price changes, price level changes on supply. Uh, in another video, we'll talk about what will shift that aggregates that short run aggregate supply left or right and that's an important part of the story as well